Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Coffee and Headlines. This is our morning get together live here on Facebook, where we take a look at headlines, headlines from our city, our state and our country. We take a look at your comments, your ideas and your suggestions. We scratch our head and pick our nose if we're feeling itchy <laughs> and we combine all this information to hopefully connect with one another, connect with our destination, connect with our country's culture way of life as a community of English-speaking locals living here in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. How about that? If you are new to our daily broadcast, my name is Paco, and we'd love to hear from you. If you are new, you can let us know by writing the word new in your comment. And if there's something truly important that you wish to share or that you would like a reaction on, it helps a great deal if you add a capital letter Q to your comments. So this is what we have today is Friday, no Thursday. What am I talking about? Today is Thursday, August 25th. The weekend is almost upon us. And we have a bunch of interesting and important information to share today from a couple of developments with one of our local hospitals. And that is good news. We have an update on daylight savings. Daylight savings is going away. And uh, since some of you have been following the Ayotzinapa reporting that we've been doing lately, and some of you went out and watched that wonderful documentary on Netflix, I have decided to continue sharing information about the developments on this important situation with um, our former uh, Attorney General Jose Murillo Caram now in jail. Um, what else do we have? Oh, we have an update for Day of the Dead, which is going to be fun to get to. And um, we might as well push the button and get started. For starters, we have good news about the regional hospital. Governor Enrique Alfaro took to his Facebook page to announce that he will be in town this weekend for the reopening of our city's regional hospital. Uh, after a major infrastructure overhaul for which 111, well, 118 million pesos were invested. This is good news on its own, but it's also, of course, worth mentioning that Governor Alfaro is always quite keen on answering questions about this, that, and the other. So hopefully we'll look forward to a few interesting headlines next week. We brought up the issue of daylight savings a couple of times, and now the Chamber of Deputies Energy Commission has endorsed President Lopez Obrador's proposal to eliminate daylight savings altogether. So everything seems to indicate that after 26 years of implementation, we won't have to switch our clocks this winter. With the exception of our border states, a strip of border um, with the United States, where daylight savings will remain in effect for commercial purposes. At this stage, said Energy Commission President Manuel Rodriguez, the savings are minimal and it is more important to prioritize the health 
and well-being of citizens. Yay. Um, so, as I mentioned to you, we are following this situation with uh, former Attorney General Jesus Murillo Karam, and I have three headlines to share with you. The first one has to do with the fact that he was questioned yesterday. The audience at the Federal Justice Center in the North Jail, or Reclusorio Norte in Mexico City, began at 9 a.m. Uh, the former Attorney General, as you know, or if you don't, is accused of fabricating the so-called historic truth that states that 43 students were kidnapped, murdered, and burned in a trash dump. Authorities claim that on October 7 of that year, one day after it was announced that Attorney General Murillo Karam was in charge of the investigation by presidential order, a meeting took place in the state of Guerrero, where the events took place in which a number of high-ranking members of the administration at the time were present. The agenda, allegedly, of this meeting was to come up with a version of the truth, uh, a version of the events that everyone could agree on, or to look at it differently, a version that was convenient for everyone, and this is the so-called historic truth. At the time, it's worth mentioning that uh, Murillo Karam gave a big statement and said, this is the historic truth. And that was his way of saying, okay, this is what it is. Now you can leave us alone and you can move on with your business. But of course, many years have gone by and, um, and now the shit is hitting the fan. In his morning press conference yesterday, President Lopez Obrador stated that Murillo Karam gave, gave himself a guilty verdict simply by saying that he was indeed responsible for the investigation of the case. But even so, President uh, Lopez Obrador said he has the right to defend himself, and of course he does. But Lopez Obrador made a simple request. If indeed Murillo Karam received orders from above to come up with the so-called historic truth, all he has to do is to say who he received those orders from. And this is the meat and potatoes of the situation. When all these people agreed, supposedly, to come up with one version that worked for everybody, they also agreed on a vow of silence. So yesterday's questioning lasted 12 hours, after which the 74-year-old former attorney general looked visibly tired and annoyed, but at the same time, he looked worried. To the entire process, he remained strong at defending the so-called historic truth. And when it, was when it came time to determine what happens next, and given the fact that he has enough resources and means to avoid justice, it was determined that he will remain in prison while his trial moves forward. This, my friends, has to be one of the most important trials that Mexico has ever seen about Mexico's own government. And how deep and how long this will go is unclear at this time, but it is it is important. And with your, if you don't mind, we're going to continue to follow this here because it is important to me and it, I think it should be important to anyone that wishes to understand how Mexico's history has evolved as far as how we deal with corruption and immunity. How's that for Thursday? Let's take a look at the weather now and see what's going on out there. Uh -huh. I spun my weather manipulation service off into its own company so I can no longer be held liable for any disasters, disasters it creates. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Snarky Weather says it's 28 degrees Celsius out there. Feels like 32. Humidity is at 82%. And our current temperature in Fahrenheit degrees is 82. 82 seems to be an important number today. Uh, our weather forecast for the day, possible light rain in the morning with a high of 32 and a low of 25. Tomorrow, Friday, rain starting in the afternoon with a high of 31 and a low of 24. 
<laughs> I just caught one of your uh, I just caught one of your comments and I'll react to it in a second. Uh, Saturday, we're going to have rain until the evening and uh, a height of 30 and a low of 24. Oh, Kate, Kate Rayburn, you just made me laugh. Kate says there are hats missing. <laughs> Back there, there are no longer hats. Well, you know what, Kate? They are missing because I've decided to become less of a caveman. I actually have cleaned my house. Like, I actually could have people over for for coffee or cocktails or, I don't know, whatever, and not feel so self-conscious about the fact that uh, cleaning the house is not my strongest point. So, no, the hats are now safely stored in my closet or hanging from a perch in the bedroom, which is actually where where they belong but thank you for giving me a nice little bit of laughter and we have a few other comments to share before we move on to our leisurely stuff those of you that fly in and out of puerto vallarta with certain regularity will be happy to know that construction of a new terminal at our international airport begins this morning this coming monday not this morning this coming monday as informed by Grupo Aeroportuario del Pacifico, which is the agency in charge of our airport and several others in the region. We don't have a lot of information about what it's going to look like or how large it's going to be or when it's going to be finished, but something that we certainly do know um, is um, the fact that our airport has pretty much reached its capacity given the influx and outflux of people moving through it on at any given day. So it is a good thing that we're going to have a new terminal built and uh, we'll see how that goes on and when it's going to be ready and we'll be happy to keep you posted on that. And the next one that I have uh, came from Facebook. This made me laugh because again, we have commented before on Mexico's obsession with world records and now Apparently, uh, according to this headline that uh, we picked up on Facebook from Vallarta en Línea, uh, our municipality will build the largest Katrina in the history of history for the upcoming, um, the upcoming Day of the Dead celebration. But, you know, I personally care less about the Katrina and care more about the fact that it'll, it'll be nice to actually celebrate Day of the Dead. And we're going to celebrate Day of the Dead after two years of not having it due to the pandemic. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what kind of celebration we're going to have. So I don't want to necessarily tell you much about how we used to have the celebrations or what used to go on. Instead, we'll start looking forward to whatever style or format of celebrations we have in this new normal coming up. We know that Day of the Dead is a very popular celebration. A lot of people come to Puerto Vallarta from elsewhere in Mexico and also from abroad to enjoy Day of the Dead here in the city. So we'll keep an eye open to see exactly what goes on. And the last headline that I have to share with you today, in case this is important to you, once again, the New York Times has gifted us with five interesting new classical releases that we can enjoy right now. I'm seeing music by Sforzak and music by Benjamin Britten and perhaps a couple of new works. So this will be a fun list to check out if classical music is your thing. And now let's take a quick look at your comments just to see what everyone is up to right now, starting with all your wonderful good mornings. Uh, Dave reports a muggy day in Boston. It's muggy here. I'm schwitzing already. Uh, but that seems to be a regular way of life in the summertime. Uh, let's see what else we have. Oh, can I brag? My friend Tommy last night totally outdid himself. Tommy went and took the Chile Senogada cooking lesson with Carmen Porras. And boy, did he, did he pay attention. We had, a few of us had dinner at their home. And it was, I felt good to see someone actually putting some teachings into good use. I sent a message to Carmen Porras yesterday, my friend Carmen, and I said to her, I hope this makes you feel good because somebody's actually 
implementing your class. So I took a bunch of photographs that I'm going to share with her and maybe with you if you care to see them. But it was it was a lovely, a lovely dinner and a great um, opportunity to appreciate how a traditional dish like uh, Mex like Mexico's chiles and nogada is labor intensive. So if you go to a restaurant and you find that certain things are expensive, like, you know, getting served chiles and nogada is not inexpensive because of the labor involved in preparing them. There's, they're very labor intensive. So um, this is good to know. So my appreciation goes to my dear friend and my gratitude for being invited to such a lovely affair. Uh, let's see. Parim pam 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 pam. Doody doody do. Mihal, good morning. Can only stay for a few minutes. Cluster dentist appointment coming up. When are you getting back to Puerto Vallarta? I'm getting impatient. <laughs> let's see what else. Kathy says it's almost Friday. It is. And this is going to be a fun weekend. There's all kinds of things going on. My goodness. Uh huh. Good morning from Minneapolis. Today is the first day of the Minnesota State Fair. The 12 day event is the second largest state fair in the USA. Take photos for us, Jonathan. For those of us that don't know what goes on at a state fair, I'd be curious to see. And I hope you have a good time celebrating whatever it is that you are celebrating. Uh, let's see. Pa -di -pa 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 -pa. Logan says, oh, and I got a good impression of Logan doing his excuse me while he's trying to get by on his bicycle on the Malecon. We'll share that as part of our pre-recorded content on Saturday. Logan says, I won't miss springing forward and losing an hour of sleep, but I will miss the extra hour of sleep when we all go to fall back in the autumn. Well, you know, I forget if we go forward or backwards. The argument that the Mexican government is making that is that early in the morning when it's dark, it's not as safe for some people to go out and uh, go to work while it's dark. And that's what I read. And because I don't pay much attention to it, I don't care one way or another. But I will say that the switch does mess up with my, my sleeping habits. Let's see what else we have. Um, I saw this pop in when we were talking about Ayotzinapa. Absolutely. 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 It is one of the worst. Next to Tlatelolco, it's one of the two most egregious situations involving the Mexican government acting in ways that have not been completely explained. And um, we'll, we'll have to see what happens moving forward. Uh, ba -ba -ba bim Thank you, Kelly. I like to learn about the government so I can understand the people and culture as long as you're safe reporting it. Um, I don't think I fear for my life. Thank you for your concern. Um, but more importantly, uh, your your statement of wanting to to learn about how things work here, Kelly, confirms to me, the fact that you are one of those people that live here because you want to be here and you want to get immersed in what our country has to offer. So I thank you. I thank you for that. That means a lot to me. And I am so very happy to continue to report on important things that can give a better picture of who we are as Mexicans and how we think and feel. Oh, that gave me the warm fuzzies. Um, let's see what else we have. The hats added character. Okay. Maybe, maybe I will rotate them. <laughs> I don't know what I can do with the hats, but maybe I will, I will rotate them. Uh, and yes, Brad, this is, this is yet another important issue. The Lorco massacre in 1968 that remains a mystery. Or one that people don't want to talk about. But yes, horrible things. Uh, let's see what else we have. Do -de -do -do. Maggie, as in Peggy, says, I still remember the old airport building in which all the luggage used to be searched by hand. Oh, my God. To think we're on our way to not one but two fully functional terminals makes me very happy. And I read 
in the article that the new terminal is going to be totally environmentally awesome. Like no emissions, no, no nothing. <laughs> it's going to float in the air. No, I don't know how it's going to work, but I, I will keep you posted. Uh, let's see. Oh, my goodness. Sage, today's a good day. I'm finally a temporary resident of Mexico. So you, you and Guitar Man really moved down here, didn't you? That's wonderful. That is wonderful. Uh, let's see. Eric says, Buenos dias, Paco. Iremos para una cerveza pronto. Yes. Yes, let's do that. Um, but, 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 but let's go have beers. Yes, I'll let you know. I'll send you a message after the broadcast. Uy. Uh, let's see. What else? <laughs> I'm sorry, this is not funny, but it's re it reads so funny. We don't change the time here in Saskatchewan. The chickens won't lay eggs on time. Well, I'll be darned. <laughs> I'll be darned. Last time I asked Luna to do anything on time, Luna just meowed at me and she's like, you know, go, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Ay, Dios mío, I am in a simple mood this morning. Um, oh, David? Dave, you make me so jealous. Dave is heading to San Sebastián del Oeste. I hope you have a good trip, and I hope that the, the highway is in good condition. I think it is, um, I, I'm envious in the best possible way. I haven't been to San Sebastián, but I my next trip to San Sebastián, unless something wonderful happens beforehand, is going to be for the patron saints party in January, which is happening for the first time, I hope since the pandemic and it is a great opportunity for eye candy if you catch my drift <laughs> lots of cowboys but that's all i'm gonna say um let's see oh another bostonian susan whose last name i'm gonna take a, i'm not gonna take a chance on um hello from balmy boston thank you very much for your comment susan you may or may not know that i lived in boston for 19 years so a part of my life remembers Boston very fondly, although I would be terrified to go back and find a lot of things that I remember changed. Uh, let's see what else we have. Sage, I'm so happy that you're enjoying yourself. I look forward to the opportunity of meeting you and your guitar husband um, Sometime in the future, hopefully we'll do some kind of impromptu dinner at one of these restaurants and we'll get together. Kate asks in high heels. Oh, dear. I don't know if that refers to Dave or to myself, but uh, yes, we may actually schedule the second the second um, the second training session of Eileen to the Left's Academy for uh, what did we call it for high heel walking? And if you don't know what this is about sometime. Last year, a bunch of us homo boys decided to go to San Sebastián del Oeste together and we brought some stilettos in tow and we wore some outfits and, uh, <laughs> and wigs and we decided to learn how to sashay walking in high heels um, and it was fun. The video is somewhere in YouTube if you want to look for it, um, but hey, you know, at my age, you got to have fun doing some kind of crazy stuff from time to time. Uh, let's see. Oh, thank you very much, Bill. You know, I mean, some of the news were really grim, but, uh, you know, we try to keep it light, light, but meaningful, light, but meaningful. Um, and this pretty much brings me to the end of today's comments. We're almost at the weekend. There's lots of things going on. A cryptic crochet flower chingadera going on on Saturday that we're certainly not going to go because they did not provide enough information. A craft fair on Sunday that I'm definitely hoping to go to. And I am getting together with one of you, a very big hearted contributor to Coffee and Headlines, who um, apparently came back from the United States with some technology gifts that will help us improve the quality of our walks. So I will be looking forward to getting together with him and his wife tomorrow. I will report um, soon, soon. But in the meantime, have an amazing... Oh, good, good, good. A drive to San Sebastian yesterday, found the highway in good condition. This is good to know. There you go, Dave. You, so you should have a very event, 
uh, incident-free drive to San Sebastián del Oeste. Uh, ba -da -ba -ba. Yes, that is correct, Gary. When I was trying to sashay on the high heels, a table got in the way. A table came into my path. It was not me bumping the table. A table got in my path. Anyhow, thank you so much for making, uh, for making me smile, for making me happy, for joining me in these little adventures every morning. Your company, your support, your curiosity about Mexico is so nurturing. Thank you so very much for that. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Have a great day. Thank you.